Hi guys, it's Broderick here, and in today's episode, I'll be going over whether it's worth getting SLI or not. So here, we have two different GDX 780s running in SLI mode. The first 780 is the reference 780 from Gigabyte, and the second 780 is the 780 Game Mode Overclocked Edition, so it's a game with Phantom. And that's running, they're running the same 8 and 6 pin configurations, but originally they would run at different clock speeds and they're obviously connected with the SLI bridge. So, depending on what CPU you've got, you can get up to quad SLI with these sort of graphics cards. Obviously, a older, or not older, but a 4th gen standard CPU from Hatswell wouldn't really be able to have the bandwidth to be able to do quad SLI. And it really depends on how big your graphics cards are like. The bottom one here is a triple slot, so we're really lucky that it fit. And the top one is a dual slot graphics card, so it didn't really matter as long as the dual was on top. It's got enough room in there to breathe, and the one has in and the other one has enough room in there to breathe as well. We've also got a fan running over here, so that's fine. And to power it, we've got the EVGA Supernova 1000 Watt Gold Edition, so it's got 80 plus gold rating and it's using modular cables. Obviously the cabling isn't the best I admit, but it does the job and as long as the case is closed you won't notice a difference anyway. The airflow, we've got two fans running, so you definitely want good airflow with SLI, especially if you're going to overclock guys. You don't want to be sort of having them if you're doing quad, you sort of are forced to have them right next to each other, but it really depends on the design. If you're running a graphics card with the reference design like the top one, it doesn't matter too much if, you, if they're right next to each other, because they have really good, I guess they push the air out the back of the graphics card over there, so it doesn't really matter. Whereas this one, it's sort of circulating air with its free fan, so... And if you're wondering whether the cards didn't work or not in SLI because they're different models, or not different models, they're different, I guess, configurations like I've got here, as long as they are the same graphics card, they'll work. But they must have the same amount of video RAM. These are both 3GB 780s. And if the clock speeds are different, the, it runs at the slowest graphics card's clock speed, so it underclocks the faster card. And if you want, you can also overclock in SLI mode as well. So now I'll be moving on to the performance gain from running SLI graphics cards. I'll first run the uh, GDX 780 without enabling enhanced 3D performance, which basically disables SLI. So you'll be able to see how it does with one graphics card. Then I'll enable the enhanced 3D mode and they will enable SLI and you'll see the benchmark results. I'll also run a few games like that as well so you can have a good idea. Anyway, I'll move on to that now. Obviously we're not going to pull out one of the graphics cards to do this test so we're going to go to NVIDIA control panel and hit disable SLI. But if you want to enable it again just click manage 3D or maximize 3D performance and then hit apply. Anyway, let's move on to the benchmarks now. Hey guys, this is my results for the single 780 Fire Strike benchmark. I ended up getting 8147, which is pretty good for a 780 reference design non overclocked. And we've got 80, it's a bit of an 83% of all results. And I'm pretty sure it is running the, uh, the default graphics card because it's going to have a pretty low clock speed. Where is it? It is running at core clock 863 megahertz. So yeah, that's definitely reference, not the overclocked version, which is the bottom graphics card. Now let's move on to Battlefield 4 and see what sort of average FPS we will get on the test range. The standard GDX 780 by itself is fine for 1440p. It gets about 60 FPS on test range, or to be more specific, 58.8 average FPS so it got a max of about 80 and a minimum of, of about like 40 so it, it was staying around 60 usually and if you turn vsync on it will just generally stay at 60 and it should be fine so 
The 780 by itself, especially if you've got an overclocked one, should easily be able to handle 1440p resolutions, which is a lot more than 1080p. It's halfway between 1080p and 4K, so it's pretty up. It's pretty high up there in terms of resolution. I forgot to say, but I actually was recording with Shadowplay for the Battlefield benchmark, so that would have added about 5 to 10 FPS maybe if I wasn't recording, Usu usually about 6 FPS, so it did make a bit of a difference, so it would have been about 64 FPS, but that's what we got while recording, and I did the same with the uh, SLI version. So now let's move on to our next benchmark which is the first SLI benchmark, and let's see how much of a performance gain we've actually gotten. Hi guys, in the SLI configuration for Fire Strike Normal Edition, we scored 12,795, which is just awesome for a score. We, are, we scored in the top 98% of all results. That's where it says a normal gaming PC is, and or ex a high-end gaming PC, and this is where SLI is really scoring in, so it's definitely right at the end there. It's got another 2% and it will be just, it will be ridiculously powerful, but that's where a gaming laptop is, and that's where, these, where this SLI config is, so it's ridiculously powerful. Even though it's only running at the slowest processor speed, which is 863 megahertz. It's still just beasting away on this benchmark. But you guys don't really care about benchmarks, do you? You probably want to see Battlefield. So I'll, I'll show you some Battlefield with SLI config on. The SLI performance on Battlefield 4 translated very well with the SLI graphics cards, it got about a 70% performance increase, and for the Fire Strike one, it got about a 50% increase, which is really good to be honest, and that's what you should really be expecting if you're getting SLI. Don't expect it to exactly double your performance, but you should expect an at least 40% increase in a worst case scenario. But you've got to remember, there are some games that don't work too well with SLI. There's not too many of them out there anymore, but sometimes when games first release, they need to wait a while for an SLI patch to come out. But that shouldn't really be an too big of an issue. So here's my thoughts on SLI. If you're going to actually go and get two cheaper cards for SLI, I wouldn't recommend this as it's a lot more stable to have one good one and that allows you in the future to save up and get a better one, translating in a lot better performance. And if you've got the funds to actually start off with a high-end SLI rig and you don't want to buy like a Titan Z or something, I would highly recommend this because it's a lot cheaper and you're going to get the same performance and just buying a Titan Z isn't worth it in the first place. So that's really my thoughts on SLI. And if you've currently got a graphics card and you've got the motherboard to do SLI and you've got at least an 850 watt power supply, definitely go for it guys, you won't regret the performance increase. And in some games you'll get like 80% increase I've heard, but for what I got in Battlefield I was really happy with that. And in the future, I would definitely not hesitate getting SLI. So, please consider it. Thanks for watching. See you later.